People who are creative and who have a passion to make a difference are the ones who are most likely to succeed. Design thinking, on the other hand, is a way of looking at the world in which you don't see problems, you see opportunities. Olin is designed to be an education laboratory. So everything at Olin has an expiration date, including the <laughs> curriculum. My favorite class at Olin has been user-oriented collaborative design because I loved going out into the world and getting to learn about all these different people. And I really loved that the designs we were doing were designed with and for those people. One of my first few weeks here on campus, um, I found a faculty interested in brain-computer interfacing, and I just immediately got into contact with her, asked her if I could start research with her, and within that year, we had founded the Human Augmentation Lab. The ability to take an idea and bring it to fruition, or take an idea, bring it to a professor, work closely with that professor, and bring it to fruition, that happens here, and it's really hard to find anywhere else.是欧林公学院的创校校长嗯, so you were the first employee of Olin, and you were the founding president. Um, so when Olin was founded, what was your vision for the school? Well, um, there was a lot of unhappiness about the way engineers were being prepared in the 1990s in the U.S. Uh, the primary concern was that the students were learning a lot of physics and mathematics, but they didn't know how to invent or create or make anything. Uh, people in industry were unhappy. Uh, they made their wishes known loudly to the government and to universities. They said that engineering graduates could take tests, but they didn't know how to work together on a project. They didn't know how to make things in the shop, and they couldn't get things done on time and on budget. And most people thought, there's no way you can change universities, and received a letter about this idea, which I almost discarded because I thought it was crazy, but of course it turned out to be the right thing. 之前几次失败的工科教育改革尝试，让欧林基金会大胆决定，新建一所学校去实现他们的梦想，投入近五亿美金打造欧林工学院，目标是重新定义工科教育。so when you recruit students, um, you know, so what are your standards, your criteria, and um, you know, what are the characteristics that you were looking for? We were looking for people with multiple intelligences. Uh, this is not about who had the highest score on the math test. Um, so we need to have people who can do the math or they can't engineer things, but that's not enough. And no one gets into Olin without going through what we call Candidates Weekend. So we bring in students, um, in our case, about 70 of them at a time for one weekend. And we put them in teams of five soon after they arrive. And they spend the weekend together with these five people that they've never met. And they do all kinds of activities as a group, including building things. We also ask them about what does it mean to live a good life? Um, what are their values? What are the things that matter most to them? But they have to have a passion beyond getting good grades or making a lot of money. But what are the characteristics that you found that determine students' long-term success? After watching this for years, um, I think our community has redefined what we mean by an engineer. To us, an engineer is a person who envisions what has never been and does whatever it takes to make it happen. It doesn't start with math, it starts with vision. Uh, so people who are creative and who have a passion to make a difference are the ones who are most likely to succeed. So much happened in so little time.
One of the very first things that we did in building Olin is some experiments in which we asked students to do a project we thought would be way beyond their capability. To watch them fail because we thought we would learn a great deal from watching this process unfold in front of us when, they, when you give them too hard of a problem. Uh, we asked them to design, build, and demonstrate a pulse oximeter and to do this in five weeks. But in five weeks they built one and they had it working. And so we built, we were shocked, as if the kids were two feet taller now uh, when they, they exceeded their own expectations. Olin Olin工学院的办学理念认为,优秀的工程师就像外科医生一样,必须去接受大量的实战训练,把这个跨学科的理念真正落实到了项目制的教学中。是围绕希望培养的学生的技能去设计课程。那学生在四年的本科学习中,
who will agree to be interviewed by these five students for two hours each. The point, what does it mean to be elderly in America today? What is it that they're most afraid of? And they were permanently um, assigned to a wheelchair. If you're permanently in a wheelchair, um, you can't look people in the eye for the rest of your life. You look at their belt buckle as they're standing in your city. Um, and when they come to visit you on the weekend, they assemble in a group around you, behind you, and they talk about you in the third person. You're no longer a person. You're a problem that they have to solve. They also found that once you go into the wheelchair, um, you can't walk anymore. So you can't burn calories at the same rate. So you can't control your metabolism. And so you can't control your weight. They began to brainstorm and they imagined they could make a little carpet with um, pressure sensors on it. And you could then possibly drive your wheelchair right onto this carpet and the pressure sensors would measure how much you weigh, and they would send that information by an RFID radio transmitter to uh, your iPhone, which has some software on it that would convert that into your weight. They went back then to visit with the people in the nursing home, and they presented their list of ideas. The elderly people said, oh, we are so impressed. That would make a difference in our life. Do you think you can actually make it? And they said, well, we don't know. We don't have a course in this, um, but we'll find out. And in four months, they built one. So they have a prototype now. The next course in the curriculum, how to start and run a business. And with this idea and with these people uh, as inspiration, they started a company uh, in their uh, dorm room. And uh, the company still exists today. You can't spend 20 hours in a nursing home with 80-year-old people talking about their lives without building a sense of empathy, personal bonding, and a belonging. These are people you care about. Secondly, you can't go home with no course and no guidance, but an inspiration to make something and have to figure it out yourself without learning agency and ability to learn how to learn on your own. And the third thing is, when you come back with a project that works and you see the look on the face of the elderly people who tell you this will change my life, you get this sense of purpose in life. I can make a difference in somebody else's life. Um, I don't have to wait till I get a PhD from Harvard to go out and work in the world. I can do it now, even though I'm only 19. Um, and that's what we mean by identity, agency, and purpose as life transformative elements of an engineering uh, undergraduate student at Olin. Part of the culture is built up around a group of people who want to change the world for the better. Olin ah, 希望重新定义工程的概念，引导学生啊，把所学是运用于为社会服务，也把衡量一个工程师的标准呢，变成了不只是看他是否创造了一个好的科技产品，还要看这个产品能否解决真实的社会问题。让社会或一部分人群因此受益，并改善他们的生活。欧林不仅重塑了学的方法，更改变了教的模式。这个过程啊，其实对教师而言更具挑战。Ray Miller 说：“是使命感将他和其他欧林的老师召唤在一起，全情投入到了打造欧林这个独特的模式中，与学生共筑欧林社区。”下节继续。We were looking for people with multiple intelligences. No one calls me Dr. Miller. They call me Rick. Peaceful well-being on our planet is not going to be the result of guns. It's going to be the result of education. 在这里啊，老师的教课方式啊，从灌输知识和考试测评的形式。转变为了辅助引导学生做项目的同伴和导师。
打破了传统的由单个导师培养指导人才的方式，而是采取了团队教学的方式，让学生啊可以从不同的导师身上去汲取不同的思维方式和科研方法，对老师的评估和考核呢也完全改变了，不再以论文去考评。而是考察老师如何去指导并帮助学生在课堂里做项目，甚至是在学生毕业后，老师是否还继续提供帮扶和指导。I was worried though about faculty. Why would a faculty member do this?、Um, Olin does not offer a PhD. To be the most famous faculty member, you need to win the Nobel Prize, and that's about research. It's not about teaching undergraduate students. The chances of winning the Nobel Prize by working at Olin are pretty close to zero.、Um, on the other hand, Olin doesn't offer tenure either. Yeah, that was very interesting. It was already hard enough. It was a new institution and no tenure track for professors. Yeah, if you ask most of the employees at Olin, they'll tell you they do not have a job. They have a calling. They have a mission in life, which is greater than self. Um, that tends to unite people. It tends to bring them together because that、uh, is infectious. If Olin has a mission to change design education in large numbers of engineering schools, and those are the people who agree deeply agree with your vision and values. Yes, and they're unusual.、Um, one of them is a professor, Diana Debbie. Diana is a professor of electrical engineering and music, and no, Olin doesn't offer degrees in music.、Um, Olin offers degrees in engineering, but this is a description of who she is. So Diana began her career as a concert pianist.、Uh, she's played solo at Carnegie Hall in New York. She taught part time at Juilliard. She's a composer, but at mid career, she became curious about electronic music. She got a PhD in electrical engineering at MIT. So Diana is an example of the founding faculty at Olin who think differently. We believe in design thinking and creativity, and if you cannot envision it, you'll never build it. So being able to learn to think in three dimensions and to think deeply about the meaning of, of art、uh, is fundamental to being a good engineer. And these people can fully be themselves when they come to Olin. Because you embrace their backgrounds. We have about forty forty five percent women faculty now,、um, and we have a, at least fifty percent student body at the same time. And it turns out that changes the culture as well.、Um, they tend to be more interested in people than things, and so the engineering curriculum developed in a human centric way. Olin is designed to be an education laboratory, so everything at Olin has an expiration date, including the curriculum. One thing that I saw Rick doing really well over and over was empowering the people that he worked with and supporting them, giving them clear direction, but then getting out of their way and getting fantastic results. One thing I learned from Rick was to trust the students to be the perfect co-conspirators in imagining a new education system from the ground up. Things do not have to be done the way they've always been done. The traditional culture in higher ed is that the teacher is the omnipotent、um, god who knows everything about the subject, and this person stands on a pedestal in front of you and never makes any mistakes and tells you exactly what to write down. And if you have to ask a question. Um, you have to stop that. So at Olin College, no one calls me President Miller. No one calls me Professor Miller. No one calls me Dr. Miller. They call me Rick. Okay, and we call them by their first name. And this gives everyone permission to have an idea. It gives everyone a permission to be a member of the team. There's a way of preparing teachers. They are assigned to teach in the team. With faculty members who have very different backgrounds, and they're teaching a subject for which they are not the expert, so they become very much the student. And it's very common at Olin for、um, students to raise their hand in the middle of a 
conversation and say, I don't understand anything that you're telling me. <laughs> you think you're teaching me about structural mechanics of large buildings, but what I'm hearing is matrix algebra, which is a foreign language to me. The teacher says, oh, then I have to change things. Um, and they come back the next day and they've completely adjusted the conversation at Olin. It's more a conversational than it is a lecture. The evaluation system sets the guidance and you know the, the direction for people to, to work towards. So how do you um, how do you evaluate students? Well, it's all about student success. But the idea is once we accept them into our institution, they're like our children. Um, now, if they have trouble, we will work with them to help them get through it. Uh, nobody wants to have trouble. Nobody wants to be the slowest kid in the class. So they're working very hard. Number two, we do a lot of teamwork. Um, and at first there was confusion about that. How can you tell what maybe student A did more work than student B? And maybe student B didn't learn as much as student A because they were in a team and so on. There's obsession about this um, in testing in colleges. And what we found is that companies don't obsess about this at all. So we start with measuring the team. And then we look to differentiate people within the team by looking at what the students tell us about their engagement with each other. And then we make sure that the teams change so they'll be on 25 different teams before they graduate with lots of different students along the way. And you get a pretty good idea of how their ability to work on things. But how do you track student growth and show to the potential employers or future schools uh, you know, what the student really knows? Olin teaches them how to be an engineer. And you can't be an engineer without having a client. A client who is paying something for your services, who has a deadline, and has an expectation that the product works. So in the end of our 25 projects, if they do, they have a year-long project for a corporation. And the corporations today are paying $55,000 for the privilege of working with four to six students at Olin for one year on a project that the company assigns to the students. Uh, there are often patents developed as a result of this work. A number of students uh, have job opportunities immediately from the companies that they work with. Um, a number of companies have created new product lines as a result of the work that the students have put in during that year. So that's how the companies find out about whether the old students can actually do something. 我们看到啊,欧林公学院创造了一种氛围,重视团队协作而不是个人成就,跨学科学习而不仅仅是某个专业的知识,鼓励试错而不是逃避风险,创造新知和新项目而不仅仅是消费已有的知识,以及靠内